Hi there and welcome to this video focusing on types of substance. The main aim for this video is to have a look at what the different types of bonding are and how you can tell what type of bonding is occurring based on the properties. If we have a look then at the types of atoms involved in each of the different types of bonding, both simple and giant covalent have non-metals only in their structures, metallic contains metals only and ionic contains both metals and non-metals, must have at least one of each. So, if you're looking at the periodic table in the exam and you want to know whether something's ionic, covalent or metallic, the first thing you do is go to the periodic table. And what I'd always recommend is draw a line along here. Now this will show you where your metals and your non-metals are. So everything to the left of this arrow is a metal and everything to the right of this arrow is a non-metal. Okay? Using that, you can then work out whether it's ionic, covalent, or metallic or not. So for example, if you had carbon dioxide, you know where this line is. Carbon is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal. If it's two non-metals, you know it's covalent. NaCl, sodium chloride, you've got Na over here, which is sodium, and Cl over here, chlorine, which makes sodium chloride. So it's a metal and a non-metal, therefore it's ionic. And then finally, Ni, you find Ni here, nickel, it's just one non-metal, therefore it's metallic. If we move on to the melting points then, the key thing with melting points is the only one that's low is simple covalent. All the other three, giant, metallic and ionic, are high melting points. So, for example then, if we have four substances with four different melting points and we had a look at each of them, substance A has got 1204 degrees C melting point, so we'd say that that is not simple covalent, so it's either got to be ionic, covalent, or metallic. B, minus 83, anything less than zero, you can definitely say is simple covalent. Same with C, it's around 100, so that's relatively low, that's simple covalent. And then D, which is giant, so we can't turn around and say that it's ionic or giant covalent or metallic, we can't say which one is which, but we know it's one of those three and it's not simple covalent. If we were to focus on solubility then, the key thing is to remember that simple covalent, most of them are insoluble, giant covalent and metallic, all of them are insoluble, and ionic, there are some solubility rules, but the general rule is most of them are soluble. So if we go back to what we were looking at before then, we had worked out that B and C were both simple covalent compounds, but we didn't know about A or D. So if we put in the solubility, for A, if we have a high melting point, we know it's either ionic, giant covalent, or metallic. If it's soluble in water, it's got to be ionic bonding, because we know metallic and giant covalent are insoluble. We knew that B and C were simple covalent, and then when we get down to D, it's got a high melting point and it is insoluble. Well, we know some ionic compounds are insoluble. We know that both giant covalent and metallic are insoluble, therefore it's got to be one of those three because we already ruled out simple covalent. But at the moment with that information we can't work out any further. If we move on to conducting as a solid then, the key rule here is that the only one that will actually conduct when a solid is metallic. So simple, giant and ionic compounds will not conduct when they are solid. Okay then, so we've got D and E now, and we've got information on melting point, solubility, and whether it conducts as a solid. So D is similar to the one we saw before, it has a high melting point and is insoluble in water, telling us it could be ionic, giant covalent, or metallic, and this one, it conducts as a solid. The only one that conducts as a solid is metallic, so you know that straight away. E, high melting point, isn't soluble in water, and doesn't conduct as a solid, could be ionic, could be giant covalent. Most of the time in this situation, it will be giant covalent. The only one that conducts when dissolved is ionic. So simple covalent, giant covalent and metallic don't, ionic does conduct when dissolved. On to the apply part of this video then, I'd like you to have a look at substance A to E and look at the properties of them and tell me what type of substance each of them is. Pause the video now then and then unpause when you're done. Okay, so if we start off with substance A, it has a high melting point, we say it is soluble, doesn't conduct when solid, does conduct when dissolved, that means it's got to be ionic. If we have a look at B, 
it has a low melting point, we don't really need to go any further than that, we can turn around and say it is simple covalent. This is confirmed by the fact that it is both insoluble and doesn't conduct when solid or when dissolved. C has a melting point of 340 which is high, it's insoluble and it doesn't conduct when solid or dissolved, so that means it must be giant covalent. If we were to look at D, it has a high melting point, is insoluble, does conduct when solid, straight away we can stop there and turn around and say that it's metallic. If we were to then look at E, again straight away low melting points, we don't need to go any further, so we have simple covalent bonding. Okay, so your review question then is you are given substance X, it's a compound but you don't know what type of substance it is. Explain how you could work out experimentally whether the substance is ionic, metallic, simple covalent or giant covalent. So what you need to do is think through the properties of all the different compounds we've gone through today and think how could you prove that experimentally. And that ends this video.